Hey, I'm up here in Colfax, Illinois now. And let's see, where do we start? I guess we start over here. About the founding of Colfax, we'll go up here. We got a William Anderson, the restaurants, the Dirt Main Street, South Side, Colfax, and Schuyler Colfax. All right, so let's see what it says. It says Colfax founded in 1881 after Illinois Central Railroad extended its case a key branch through efforts of William Anderson, who lobbied the railroad to bring its tracks through the farm area outside of Bloomington. Uh, the son, William G. Anderson Sr., native of Pennsylvania, moved with his family to Kentucky and married Miss Anna Whitaker whose father was a close friend and hunted with legendary pioneer Daniel Boone. Wow, how about that? Anderson Jr., born in 1818 in Indiana, where his father relocated and serving in the War of 1812. Younger Anderson married Miss Jane Sheridan and then moved in 1857 to rural Bloomington, Illinois, buying 160 acres of Section 3 of Martin Township and built a log cabin in which his family began living in 1858. After being ordained as a minister of the Christian Church in 1859, Anderson Jr. actively preached the gospel for the next 20 years and raised significant funds to support Eureka College. During the late 1870s, he began lobbying the Illinois Central Railroad to extend their Kankakee branch down to his farm and was successful in 1880. Railroad initially assigned the name of Martin to the village along with a new, new line, but a U.S. post office already there was named Schuyler Colfax. <clears throat> Uh, after Schuyler Colfax, a journalist, businessman, and politician, he served as the 17th Vice President of the United States under U Ulysses S. Grant from 1869 to 73. Prior to that, he was Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives from 1863 to 69. As a result, the town at the site was officially named Colfax after its post office. Mr. Anderson opened a retail store in Colfax, appointed postmaster in 1891. At age of 73, he organized the State Bank of Colfax and president for six years. Then, then purchased and established the West Coal Mine, first president for four years. Became president of Colfax firm that manufactured oil cans and novelties. Two years later, a Bloomington firm bought his company. William Glasgow Anderson Jr. lived to be 89 years of age. He died at Colfax in 1908 and was buried in Wiley Cemetery. Wiley Cemetery is just right outside of town, and I've got uh, family members there. Okay, uh, we'll go over here. There's quite a few here. Coal mining. It's gonna be a lot to read here. <laughs> you know what? I am just gonna hold this right here. And you can stop it when you want to uh, read it, because it's quite some time. Here is the coal mining. Okay, we'll move over to the next one. This one might not be so long. It's Illinois Central Railroad. So, let's see. Yeah, I'll just hold that there. Well, you can read that. And, let's see. Here we got the... 1903 train. Man, look at all that smoke coming out of that thing. Here's locomotive in Colfax and the depot. Next, we'll move over to the schools. Here's the first Colfax High School, 1883 to 1900. 1901 to 1903. Well, that's kind of crazy. It only lasted two years. Then Octavia High School in 53. Colfax Jim burned in 1948. Third high school from 04 to 73. Let's see what we got down here. It says, erected 1901, Board of Education, F.J. Mitten, uh, boy, M.O. Prez or something like that. Ransom. Uh, and a bunch of names I can't hardly see. So,
Okay, on this one, yeah. Uh, schools, three years after Colfax founding, citizens built a two-story frame school in 1883. Uh, First Colfax High School class started in 1891. The nickname was the Tigers, and its colors were green and white. 1900, a wood frame building burnt down, replaced in 1901 with a three-story brick stru structure. After just one year of service, however, the larger building burnt down, and in 1904, a new story brick building was constructed. So that's why it was only two years. Okay. Septic gym building was later added uh, to the high, next high school, but the gym burned down in 48. A year later, Anchor, Cooksville, Colfax consolidated into the Octavia School District, located in Colfax. Students selected school's name. The prefix Octa is Greek for eight, and the school unit number suffix is just a completion of the word. The school's name was the Rockets. Uh, they were maroon and white. 53. New brick school built in Colfax. High school building constructed in 1904 was raised, and in 18, 1989, Seabrook Aerosmith consolidated with Octavia, created Ridgeview School District. The school name is the Mustangs, and the colors are blue, silver, and white. Now, uh, we'll see what this bell is. It says, this bell hung in the bell tower of the original Colfax High School in 1901. The building was destroyed by fire in 03. The bell was salvaged, salvaged and reinstalled into the new Colfax High School in the same location. Near the middle school, middle of the 20th century, the bell was removed due to roof renovations and shortly thereafter placed in front of Octavia Junior High School, former Colfax High School. The bell was moved to the uh, courtyard of Octavia High School in 73 and was donated to the Colfax Restoration Project in 2021. The Restoration Project honors this piece of Colfax history by displaying, displaying it proudly in our new plaza. And then you got to see this cool mural on the back of this Morton building. Welcome to Colfax, proud of our past, committed to our future. Over here, in memory of Robert and Donna Cumston, a sculpture by Robert Cumston. Okay. Let's see what these are. Colonial. It has to do with the Colonial Theater. There we go. And over here. Uh, uh, Colonial Theater was located in the 100 block West Main Street, downtown Colfax. Built in the summer of 1970 from start to finish in only 90 days. Uh, let's see, celebrated grand opening November 5th, 1917. Uh, often used for other purposes, recruitment drive for World War II. Fred Wepler, Wepler uh, owned the Colonial for much of uh, 1950s and 60s. Uh, Eugene, 1970, Eugene Gross family purchased Colonial, reopened it. Uh, then it served as a welding shop by Todd Harris. Uh, Wepler, I knew a Mrs. Wepler that worked at the post, uh, post office. I wonder if there's any relation. All right, one more thing over here. And of course, we're under a rain cloud, so it's starting to sprinkle. Never fails. <laughs> Here we go, donated by Janet Milton Brumley. And we have flags, flags up there. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Uh, just do a quick scan down here, Main Street. Here we go. All right, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.